Hi, Gary Steerman. It's a Monday, and uh, we are recording this on Friday, uh, May 18th, for release today, uh, May 21st. We're going to talk about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and a dilemma that he's experiencing. Now, uh, you may recall uh, last week we spent a lot of time talking about the military uh, games that are being staged in the Middle East right now. There are war games, uh, Eager Lion being staged out of uh, Amman, Jordan. There are war games in the Persian Gulf. There are, uh, by the way, there are three uh, American nuclear aircraft carrier task forces in the Persian Gulf, the Arabian Sea, and the Mediterranean. The, in addition to that, the Iranians are staging their own war games. <clears throat> now, in the midst of all this, peace talks are being called for, and uh, that brings me to this uh, news release from Yiriot Acharonot, dated uh, uh, back on the 18th of May. Uh, Netanyahu skeptical that Iran will end its nuclear program. Well, I'm, I join him in that. I am skeptical. Uh, he says that a diplomatic uh, solution, of course, would be the best option, but he sees no evidence whatsoever, and this is a quote, that Iran is ready to end its nuclear program. Just days ahead of a crucial round of nuclear talks with Iran, Netanyahu says uh, a diplomatic solution would be the best option. He says, but, uh, quote, I see no evidence whatsoever that an, uh, Iran is ready to end its nuclear program. Uh, the five permanent members of the U.N. Security Council and Germany are gearing up for a May 23rd meeting. Uh, and by the way, that's uh, just a couple of days from when this is being aired. A May 23rd meeting with Iran in Baghdad. What we've got now are peace talks uh, between Israel and Iran being staged in Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, while war games are being staged involving 19 nations in the Middle East. This is truly uh, an amazing time in which we live. <clears throat> Israel says a nuclear program in the hands of Iran would threaten the Jewish state's survival. Uh, and by the way, Netanyahu spoke uh, last Friday in Prague, Czechoslovakia, uh, and he said that the issue of Iran and nuclear power is the paramount issue of our time. Speaking briefly after the Czech uh, President Václav Klaus in Prague uh, had spoken, Net Netanyahu called the Iranian nuclear program not only the paramount issue of our time, <clears throat> but he said, if we succeed in peace talks, some kind of a uh, some kind of a peace talk or peace arrangement with uh, Iran, he says, I will be the first to rejoice over this. In fact, he says, I'll be, and I'm quoting, the first one to applaud, but in, until then, you have to count me among the skeptics, so said Benjamin Netanyahu. He repeated Israeli demands uh, to be met for the negotiations to be successful. Number one, all uranium enrichment inside Iran has to be frozen. Now, nuclear power plants can use non-enriched uranium. Enriched uranium, uh, once you centrifuge it up to a certain level, becomes weapons-grade uranium. And Netanyahu is saying, first of all, uh, in Iran, uh, the enhancement, <clears throat> enrichment in, inside of Iran must be stopped. Number two, its current stockpile of rich uranium has to be shipped out of the country. Uh, and, number three, the enrichment facility near the city of Qom has to be uh, dismantled. Those are the three conditions the Israelis are asking for. And uh, Netanyahu says when this is achieved, I'm the first one to applaud. But, for now, I'm a skeptic. Well, so, all right, makes sense to me. Uh, during that Prague speech, Netanyahu accused Iran of using peace talks to buy time, pretty much as North Korea did it for years, he said, going from meeting to meeting with empty promises while continuing to develop a nuclear weapon, which, by the way, the North Koreans do have, and they are uh, the loose cannon in the world, the wild card, uh, because as soon as you give uh, an unstable nation uh, nuclear weapons capability, 
predictability goes out the window. I'm thinking of Jeremiah chapter 8, which is often read in the context of peace talks. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 11, For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace, the daughter of my people, and I, I believe that this is speaking of regathered Israel because it's the daughter of my people is a term that, that is used as a latter-day indicator of who we're talking about here. Uh, skipping from verse 11 down to Jeremiah eight fifteen, we read this. We looked for peace, but no good came. And for a time of health, and behold, trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones, for they are come, they have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. And verse 17 is a, a cryptic, a cryptic statement, but I think we know what it means. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices, that is, adders, among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. Snakes are going to come among Israel, according to this prophecy, which cannot be charmed. What does that mean? That means that peace talks will not stop them. They are uncharmable. And the context of this is verse 15. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. And the next sentence, the snorting of his horses was heard from Dan, is uh, one of those cryptic statements in the Bible that has been written about on many occasions. Of course, the tribe of Dan uh, is the lost tribe. Uh, Dan went north, uh, far north to Laish, and then they went northwest across Asia Minor. And many have followed them all the way to Macedonia in the ancient days, the Danites. And in fact, the historian Josephus says that the Danites were the men of Troy in Greece. <clears throat> and so there's ample historical evidence that the Danites, uh, if you will, have a European background once they fled from Israel. And it's kind of fascinating here that the snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. Uh, Iranius, writing uh, in the second century, said, and by the way, Iranius uh, held a majority view at the time. I think most early Christians believed this. Uh, Iranius said that this is a reference to the Antichrist, where Jeremiah says the snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. Now, you may agree with uh, Iranius or not, but he has uh, Dan being the Antichrist and Dan charging down from the north to destroy the people of Israel in the latter days. And here we have, from Yediot Aharonot, we have this statement. Uh, when peace is achieved, says Benjamin Netanyahu, I'll be the first one to applaud, but until then you have to count me among the skeptics. That's perfectly in keeping with the biblical statement that uh, God says, I will send snakes among you that cannot be charmed. Uh, they may talk peace, but they won't stop making war. And the final statement on this is, they shall bite you, saith the Lord. Don't trust them. Huh? Well, an interesting section of Scripture. You might want to read it. It's uh, Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 11 through 17. Fascinating reading in the context of what's going on in Israel right now. Interesting times in which we live. Remember the old Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times, says the Chinese warlord to his uh, enemy. And we do live in interesting times, but to me they're most interesting because of the connection with Latter-day Bible prophecy. And for that reason, uh, we always end these updates by saying, keep looking up, everybody. Everybody.